guys, welcome to my channel. Today I want to talk about something that I know we all struggle with as aerialists and that is training motivation. I know that it can be really difficult to get out of bed, get to the studio, get in the air, do your warm up, do your conditioning, all of those kind of less fun bits of aerial. It can get you down. We all have days when we don't want to get out of bed, we just want to snuggle down and be lazy. And it is totally fine to have lazy days but you do also like need to eventually get out of bed. Here are a few things that have worked for me that hopefully will work for you as well. I'm not gonna lie, I also kind of just wanted to show off my beautiful bouquet. My friend here in Paris is doing uh, her own flower arranging business and she made me this and I love it. If you're in Paris and you're looking for flowers, posy and plume. Before we get started, I will of course, as always, I know you guys are sick of this by now, remind you to just subscribe to my channel because it really does make a difference. Plus, you will not miss out on any of the aerial tutorials or videos like this with a broader aerial subject that I do. I do Wednesday and Saturday videos, so make sure that you subscribe, check it out, end of commercial. And yeah, let's get to it. I'm organized, you guys. Organization happened. So surprising. My top number one way to stay motivated for me is to have a project because if I'm just going to training, I'm like, oh, I need to maintain my strength, I need to maintain my tricks, but I don't have a specific end goal in sight, that is so much harder than if I'm thinking, I need to develop this trick to put in this choreography. I have a competition coming up. I have a show coming up. I'm gonna record a video in two weeks. So even if you don't have a specific project like a show or a competition or something that is kind of coming from the outside, make your own project. Decide that you're gonna make a video of an aerial choreography that is maybe two or three minutes long. That's an easy project to fulfill. Or you can schedule yourself a photo shoot. Have a day that a couple of friends are gonna come and watch your new choreography. Something that's just gonna hold you to a goal. And I think you'll be surprised at how inspiring that can be. Giving you something that you're like, I'm gonna create this. I have committed to myself that I am gonna create a thing. I have to meet that commitment. And you know that by the time that goal arrives, you need to be ready for it. So just having a project of any sort is really gonna give you some motivation because no one wants to not meet a deadline. My next tip is to give yourself a list of moves to go through every training. That's one that I've been using a lot lately with my competition training. Plus, it's a great way to just really advance very quickly, to be honest, like the difference that it will make in the results you see is huge and it gives you a plan so you don't have to sit on the floor and be like what will I do today a pre-made list of things I need to work on it's easy to kind of do that in a mindless way even when you're not feeling very motivated there's of course always financial commitment, so book studio time in advance. Book some studio time a week from now or whenever you know you're gonna have free time and that way you are financially committed to doing it because at most studios you have to already pay when you book a studio space like that. And honestly, there have been days when I was hungover. <laughs> <laughs> I woke up and I was like, I'm not gonna go to training today. And then I remembered, oh right, I've already paid 20 euros or whatever for my training. I have to go. Even if I do just one pull up, I'll have used some of the time that I put my money towards and then I'll always end up going and just doing like a full training. So it does help to get you out of bed if you are financially already committed to that studio space or to going to class. Also, if you go to class, that's a financial commitment because you've paid for the class and most studios you have to pay several days in advance and there's a deadline of when you can cancel. So if you're committed to the class, it's gonna make you go. If I don't go, I'm gonna waste 30, 40 dollars, whatever. It will get you out of bed. <laughs> Just being inspired as well is a great motivational tool. I constantly am on Instagram, I'm on YouTube, watching aerial videos of other aerialists. I subscribe to a lot of aerialists that I admire on YouTube. I subscribe on, all right, follow, what do we do on Instagram? Follow, stalk. I stalk a lot of aerialists that I really admire on Instagram. Oh God, I'm gonna put this on the internet and then people are gonna think it's for real. Yeah, I just follow a lot of, that doesn't really sound better now. I follow? 
I follow, I'm in the bushes following you. I follow a lot of people on Instagram that are aerialists that I really admire. If you're interested, let me know and I'll do like a video of cool aerialists to follow. That could be a fun follow-up video to this one. Just watching someone who inspires me will really get me off the couch because I will be like, yeah, you're never gonna reach that if you don't go to training. And then I go to training. Another super simple one is to stay healthy because it is way, way, way harder to go and train and do a full workout and do all the things you need to get done if you don't feel great. And of course that means try not to be injured and try not to be unhealthy. But also if you get enough sleep, if you get a good balanced diet, if you are feeling healthy and energized, it's gonna be a lot easier to stay motivated and meet your goals than if you're just trying to like drag your tired self along the ground till you get to the studio. I see from experience there, you guys. Accountability is another great way to stay motivated because if you tell your friends or your family or someone in your life that you are going to training on this day, then you are much more likely to actually go and do it. I will sometimes just message friends of mine who aren't even aerialists, who are just like random people, and I'll be like, hey, I'm just gonna tell you that I'm going to class or to training or to whatever on this day because that will make me actually do it. Can you message me on Thursday and just say, hey, are you at training? And then I know that if I don't go, I'm gonna have to acknowledge to someone that I was lazy and didn't do it. The knowledge of, if I don't do this thing, I'm gonna have to own up to it to another person, uh, really will shame you into doing the thing. <laughs> the shame method is very effective. Keeping with the accountability side of things, Schedule a training with some friends. Make a plan that you're going to go to a class together. Just having, again, that person that you will at least have to acknowledge that you're not doing what you said you would do to, that didn't make a lot of sense. English, again, it's the shame method. It's the shame method. It's adding that extra layer of guilt that not only are you not doing your training, but you're also letting down your friends. The guilt method, guilt and shame. That's where Ariel comes from. It kind of is. If you do multiple apparatuses, mix up your apparatus. That's kind of a simple one, but some days you just feel more like hoop, some days you feel more like hammock, some days you feel like silk. Try different apparatuses, get some basics on a couple of different things, and then if you get in the studio and it's just not happening for you today on pole or on silks, then you can switch over, you can do some straps, you can do some hammock, you can do some trapeze. Having the option of just switching up apparatuses is going to make it a lot easier to keep it interesting and keep your mind interested in what you're doing, and it's just more fun. I video myself every time I go in the air, and you guys probably already know this, it's amazing the difference between how it feels and how it looks on a video. It's great to video yourself as much as possible to be able to look back at old videos and think, okay, two months ago when I did this video, I couldn't do this move, and now I can do it. And when you kind of take a moment and look back at where you were, and think about how far you've come, that can be a great way to stay motivated. I am making progress. This is going towards building my strength and my abilities. Just seeing your own progress can really be a great way to stay motivated. Think about the journey that you've already been on and how going to training tomorrow, going to class next week will can help you continue that journey on into the future. And my final tip is to be kind to yourself. We all do get on the bandwagon of, I'm gonna train this much, I'm gonna work out this hard, I'm gonna do all these hard tricks. And it's great to have that attitude, it's great to have goals, it's great to push yourself, it's great to hold yourself accountable for continuing your training. But at the same time, 
take some time to be kind to yourself. Take some days off. Maybe there is a day where it's just not meant to happen. Maybe there's a day where you just can't get your body in the air. Maybe there's a day where you just need to stay in bed and rest or you're a little bit injured or you're really, really, really sore and you just need to have a day off. And being kind to yourself, even though it feels counterintuitive because we all kind of want to push through and be like, I'm going to train. Being kind to yourself from time to time is actually going to help you train harder because knowing that there is a point where you'll let yourself off the hook is mentally going to help keep you motivated more than I have to do this no matter what. If your body's telling you you need a day off, take a day off. If you're emotionally overwrought one day, you're just like, I need a mental health day, that is fine. It's fine. It's fine to let it go for the day and then come back to it tomorrow and train even harder. So, um, those were my tips. I hope that you found something in all of that that will help you stay motivated and help you in your ongoing aerial progress. Honestly, it's kind of just trial and error to find things that work for you, things that work well in your lifestyle, with your schedule. Everyone's different and not the same methods work for everybody. I hope there's something in there that will work for you. If there is, let me know because you guys, really, I get so many lovely, lovely messages from all of you on Instagram and on YouTube and it really brightens up my day. So if there's something that's working for you, then comment on the video, uh, send me a message on Instagram. I love when I see videos of you guys trying out moves or applying something that I've done a video about. If you want to tag me in a video of you training one of my moves that I've done a tutorial for, or just, you know, say hi or ask for advice. I can, I can do advice as well, I guess. Yeah. Um, I've run out of things to say and I have to go to teach now. So I'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye guys.